Folks, we are here with our uh, Wheelix guide. We'll be playing uh, Wheelix in the jungle, as is her main role. So our jungle build is going to be pretty standard here. We're going to be getting Assassin's Blessing, Tier 1 Mace for the jungle clear, one health potion, Hand of the Gods, and Blink for our ganks. Uh, so what we're going to be doing here on a Wheelix is we're actually going to get... Uh, we're gonna get our Moonlight Charge uh, first. This uh, pretty typically right now is the best for clearing, especially if you're gonna run uh, from right now, the new jungle start has been to go from speed over to the blue buff. Uh, your, your ability should basically come back up in time uh, and it just has better and longer clear. And if it comes up at the right time, you can throw it at the blue and then run over to the camp and it's great. So with a wheelix what are we looking for on our skills and our passive your passive on a wheelix is really strong which is that if you do not do or take damage for th five seconds you increase your physical power upon hitting somebody uh by 30 percent by 30 percent so right there you can see my little passive buff i went and i got a 30 percent bonus power uh, on f uh, myself for 2.5 seconds. So that is a physical power scaling. So that's why we like big power builds on a Wheelix. We like big power builds because her passive gives her even more power on top of that. So items like Transcendence and Erendite are our friends. Uh, level two, I'm going to get myself Feather Set. We should talk about our ability that we got at level one. Uh, Moonlight Charge, your third ability, the ability that I like to get at level one. This is uh, a knockup ability. If you hit this on a god from the side or from behind, it will knock them up into the air. Otherwise, it is just a line damage ability if you do not hit them from the side or the back. Your second ability is called Feather Step, and this is your bread and butter on a Wheelix. It is uh, a fairly low cooldown, only about eight seconds base. Enemy and it is middle. going to be the main ability that you rank up to max first. So what does Feather Step do? Feather Step does different things depending on where you are in your, um, where you are basically in your attack chain. Uh, so your goal with Feather Step is always to have two attacks and then Feather Step. You'll know you have two attacks and then Feather Step when you see the big circle on it. What you're looking for is the big circle. So if you go one, two, you can see the big circle and then you can Feather Step. You can use it at any time, so keep that in mind. More but here. the big circle is what More you're looking here. for because it's going to do two times the damage plus it's going to be AoE. So uh, what, what Feather Step does is it is a damaging ability that makes you immune. So you have immunity frames in this ability. What that means is if you time it correctly, you can use it to avoid big damaging abilities. You can use it to avoid CC. Um, so if I'm about to get Kraken and I do this right as Kraken goes off, it actually won't do any damage to me. I won't get stunned, nothing, okay? Uh, when you use it on a god, it roots them in place and it also cripples them. So nope, you can't uh, can't jump away while they're in, you're in that uh, animation uh, and they will be rooted in place. And that is for one point, uh, excuse me, that is not for 1.5 seconds. That is for the Enemies duration the of the animation. Um, you have 1.5 seconds to actually use the ability from your hit. So if I go one, two, 1,001, 1,002, you've got a second and a half to actually use the feather step. So you don't have to use it right away uh, when it comes up. You've got a little bit of time. Your first ability, uh, I don't care what it's called. I just call it Cougar. Uh, this is going to be your movement ability. You use it to run around. You gain a bunch of extra movement speed plus 25% but Enemy you lose uh, movement speed Enemy when you strafe to the side. So when you're in your cougar form, 
if you watch me go to the left and right i move really slow so make sure that you're moving your mouse to make sure that you're always walking forward don't sidestep if you want to look just run to the right just look to the right and start running that way so you get that bonus movement speed if you actually use this ability uh you can jump with it so i can jump over this wall when you jump with the ability it goes on to cool down it's got a fairly long cooldown, 15 seconds if you right click to cancel this ability and hop off of it it does not go on cooldown. you can use it right away so if i hop on i want to get off the fight really quick but i want to still potentially have it up to use for a jump whether i want to use it as a getaway skill whether i want to use it as a chase it does not go on cooldown. So oftentimes you're going to actually right click to cancel out of this and not jump. So that way the cooldown is still up for you. You're mostly gonna use this for rotating throughout the jungle, for jungle clearing faster. And oftentimes you're gonna use it to start off your ganks uh, wherever that ends up being because of the jump that you can do with it. And it does a decent amount of damage, uh, no CC. All of your abilities on a Wheelix you can use to get ready for your Feather Step. So you don't have to auto attack in order to use your Feather Step. If you throw out your three on a God, if I throw out my three and I'm within the range of Feather Step, I can actually three and then Feather Step to appear behind them. Uh, that's a very common thing. Feather Step is slightly longer than your auto attack range. So just because you can't reach somebody in auto attack range doesn't mean that you cannot reach them. Uh, whoop! That is going to be our uh, Wheelix ultimate, uh, which combines with her three. A Wheelix ultimate is a pull, just like any other pull in the game. Think of like Sylvanas is an easy one. I pulled him. Hey, Sylvanas pull, a Wheelix pull. It's got a very long range on it. Pretty much, here's the easy way to think about it. If you're in range of your three, you're in range of your ultimate. So if at any time you hit your three, you should basically be able to hit your ultimate. If there is a target that is knocked up, just like that Sylvanas was, you will pull them to you. This can be beads and they will drop down right in place. Um, it does not have to be your own knock up. So an easy combo is like if Sylvanas goes ahead and ulties, everybody's up in his ultimate i pop my ulti i yoink Enemy somebody right on over to me not only is a wheelix's ultimate a pull but it is also a very large buff people forget about this so you don't even have to use a wheelix ultimate for the pull that is mostly what you're looking to do for it because it brings people out of position uh, but what you can do with it as well is you can use it just for the buff. It gives you a ton of attack speed and power. It gives you up to 70% attack speed and I believe 60 physical power. So what you can do as well is you can just try to use that um, for the bonus attack speed and power this is good just for fighting a 1v1 maybe you missed the knock up or you don't have an opportunity to knock up so you just use it for the buff it is also good for split pushing towers or for doing objectives uh say i want to go kill this tower i can pop my ultimate and it's going to give me that sweet attack speed and power buff that will work against the tower uh, and that buff lasts on you, I do believe, for six seconds. Gank left lane. Ugh, I tried. You can't actually... Sometimes smite bugs out, and so you never know when things are going to work, so I like to test them. Uh, banishes are not knockups, uh, so you can't pull off of... Um, Things like Freya, Freya Whoop, or uh, Janus Portal. Sometimes I like to test them because things bug out every once in a while. So sometimes you want to just make sure that that's still how an ability is working. Um, like I did right there. Because that would have been fun to discover. Especially right after patches. Enemy ultimate down. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead back up. I'm going to look if I need anti-healing. I do need anti-healing this game. So I'm going to go right into a Brawler's. If I didn't need anti-healing, I would either go into a Crusher's or Jotun's Wrath. Both are good on a Wheelix. Both are viable. Um, but this game, Sylvanas healing, Zonqui self-sustain, Ravan has built-in self-sustain. Presumably Rama is going to go lifesteal, so I'm going to get the Brawlers. 
Your classic combo that you're looking to do on a Wheelix is you're using your Cougar to run around the map. You're jumping on top or near somebody to get in range of your abilities. See if I can get in range. Nope, he knows that I am over there. After you get in range, you either three to knock them up and then ulti them, or sometimes you don't even need your ulti. Sometimes you can three, knock them up, wait for them to come down from the knock up, and then use your feather step in order to combine in order to combine uh, the longest form of potential CC. So next item we're gonna go is we're gonna go into a Transcendence. Transcendence is amazing on a Wheelix uh, because of that passive and the bonus power scaling that you get, you're gonna get so much damage value out of that ability. Also with a Wheelix's ultimate giving you so much attack speed, this is another reason why we can get away with going so much raw power and basically nothing else because when you need the attack speed most you're going to have it procced from your ultimate and you can very very easily overcap on attack speed with that proc on a wheelix's ultimate as well it should be noted uh that not only can you pull people when they are knocked up, but during any sort of effect where they leave the ground. Gotta go ahead and use my feather step in order to get behind that thought and put him down. So if Hu Yi jumps into the air, that's the easiest example because he's such in the air for so long, you can yank him right out of the air. Hun bats one, whatever. It should be noted that this works on abilities called leaps. It does not work on dashes. So Rama rollback, it does not work. You cannot pull him out of it. He never actually leaves the floor. Um, something that goes underground though, it does work. So some animations, it doesn't look like they're actually going into the air, but they are. Specifically, this works on leap abilities. So Scylla 3. Hades one, those are leaps, so you can pull them. As long as the ability is qualified as a leap, you can make it work. Um, so, uh, uh, Suku, if you were playing against an Awelix, if you were doing some Awelix on Awelix action, you can go ahead and pull her out during this because this is a leap. Just because they go underground doesn't mean you cannot pull them. As long as it's qualified as a leap. Izanami 3. Doesn't matter that she's in stealth. Doesn't matter anything. You'll still hit it. One thing to keep in mind, actually, though, about a Wheelix Ultimate is you have to be facing the target in order to pull them. So if, uh, if, um, if Hu Yi were to jump, let's say, in this direction and I'm looking this way and I hit my ultimate, even though he's in the air, it will not pull him. If I knock up Sylvanas and then I look this way because somebody else was over there and I pop my ultimate, it will not pull him. They have to be in your field of vision in order for you to pull them with a wheelix. As with all junglers, we're step one focusing on farming. Farming is our priority, so we don't fall behind in XP, trying to gank when our ultimate is up. That's our highest priority. Gonna back up. We're gonna get beads on a wheel. Nothing crazy there. Beads blink is pretty much always your standard for junglers, trying to buy sentry wards, regular wards, uh, whenever you can, when you back. Everybody on your team is in charge of warding. A Wheelix's three goes through walls. This ability is not affected by walls. Uh, this means that you can, in fact, knock people up through walls. And yes, your ultimate works through walls. So if somebody is around the side of a wall, uh, it's hard to know sometimes whether or not they actually got knocked up even if you see the damage numbers. So you have to pay very close attention to the sound effects, but a Wheelix's three does work through walls. So if this Rama were to get close enough to this targeter, I would be able to yoink him um, and then bring him to the other side of the wall. I got put in combat. I'm gonna use my ulti right here. You can see I use it, wham! So right there, what just happened is I used my ultimate off of Sylvanas's knockup. And then I knew that their Sylvanas was gonna go ahead and try to counter ulti right on back. So I used my feather step 
in order to immunity frame his knockup so I didn't take any damage or get knocked up by the enemy Sylvanas' ultimate because I was in my Feather Step. As previously discussed, Feather Step has immunity frames on it, so you do not take any damage or any CC while you were in that animation. That is basically exactly what you're looking to do on a Wheelix. You're looking for opportunities to ulti to get people out of position, whether that's off of your own three or a friendly teammate's uh, knockup or an enemy's jump. And you're looking to feather step one because it's good damage uh, in, in good CC, but never be afraid to utilize feather step as a defensive ability as well. Keep in mind, uh, because you can do combos like this, right? Three, and then I can go ahead and quickly try to get a feather step off. Stuff like that you can utilize as well defensively. Like if you're running away and you quickly turn around, if you quickly turn around and use your three and then try to feather step, you can uh, avoid abilities that people uh, don't realize that you have like your feather step up. Um, or even cougaring, cougar right in, quickly feather step, try to avoid stuff as well anything will uh, let you go right into your feather step. Robin's right around this wall. Gonna try to be sneaky. Wasn't sneaky at all, actually. Turns out he knew I was coming. This is a great opportunity. I didn't get the uh, Sylvanas pull right there. I wasn't ready in time. I'm gonna try to just run away from this. So I'm using my cougar as a jump, so it goes Enemy on cooldown. I wasn't going to have time to run away from the uh, Zonquil, so I'm just going to jump in order to get out of that range instead of just trying to run out with my cougar. Time to back it up. Get ourselves a Transcendent into an Erendite. I like cooldown on a Wheelix. You don't need a ton of cooldown on her, but a little bit can go a long way. Something like a stacked Transcendence plus an Erendite gives you 20%. That's a great spot to be on on a Wheelix. You don't have to go for 40% or anything, but a little bit is nice. As you can see, we are going really big, high power items to scale with our passive. Um, it should be noted that your ultimate would technically scale uh, with your passive as well if you have the right situation pop up uh, because it does give you 60 flat power and this scales off of your uh, physical power. Uh, if you had it proc'd at the right time, you could scale your passive off of your ultimate as well. So let's go use our ultimate for a not PvP purpose. There's a bunch of people going to right lane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start the Pyromancer here. And I'm going to use my ultimate because it's gonna give me all that bonus power and attack speed. They are rotating over, so we gotta be careful here. It does seem that they had this warded. That's fine. We're gonna go ahead and walk out of this. Feather step, clear that. Jump over the wall, use our three to clear the wave and go look at their left-hand side jungle. So that's a way that you can use the ulti um, for a not PvP purpose. You just use it for the strict passive, right? I wasn't using it for a knockup, anything like that. I was only using it to get the passive um, attack speed and power to go and try to do the objective. There's a Zonkui all the way over here. I don't know what the solo laner is doing all the way over here. I guess they're gonna go try to fight me, huh? All right. I'm backing on up. We can go get ourselves an Erendite and a Sentry Ward. For those that don't know the difference between a leap and a dash and how to tell if your pull will work on a Wheelix, in general, a leap goes over walls, a dash does not go over walls. Uh, that is the most uh, default way to basically think about it. If an ability can go over a wall, it is a leap. If it cannot, then it is a dash. You can pull leaps, not dashes. I'm going to head over to the right lane right now. Go look for this Robin. I'm going to hop off of my... Whoop. I'm going to hop off of my uh, Suku, so that way I have it up in order to keep running around with it. So right there, I use my Blink, which is a longer cooldown, but I kept my Suku up. That means that I can use um, my Cougar in order to get... I'm not going to keep fighting this. I've got a feeling something bad's about to happen. 
Try to jump me out of here. I'm gonna use my beads to immune that slow. Try to get out of the range of this Zongqi ultimate. So don't be afraid to get on your cougar in the middle of combat. Um, a lot of people only use it for the initiation or the runaway. But reminder, it gives you 25% movement speed. So there's nothing wrong with if you're if you have it up during combat, you don't have to use it for the jump every single time. I'm gonna use it for the jump right here so I can get in range of this Sylvanas kill. Um, but you can just hop on your cougar to run like four feet, catch up to the enemy so you're in auto attack range so you can feather step them. Okay? So that's what I did in that fight. Robin was just out of my range. I hop on my horse just to hop right back off again. So I gave myself that little bit of boosted movement speed that I need in order to get in range of my auto attack, which allows me to utilize the rest of my kit. Yes. Heading over towards the gold fairy now. We're going to get ready to do this. Um, keep in mind that some things are CC immune. Uh, so Robin is a good example. Robin's ultimate launches him in the air, right? But I can't pull Robin in his ultimate because he is CC immune. Um, so just because it is technically an over the wall movement ability doesn't mean I can always pull it because he's got the CC immunity in it. In that same regard, if you are playing against a Wheelix, this is gonna be uh, the opposite of an Wheelix guide part. Um, if you're playing against a Wheelix and you want to jump away, what you can do to make sure that she can't pull you is preemptively use your beads. Preemptively use your beads before you jump. That way, throughout your jump animation, you are CC immune, so she can't ulti you. If she tries to ulti you, uh, she simply will just waste her ultimate and it won't pull you at all. Much like all forms of CC in the game, you can't pull CC immune targets. It is a form of CC, so you're just immune to it while you're glowing from the beads. Uh, for our next item, we've got some options on a Wheelix. I love Mantle of Discord eventually on her for a defensive item. Uh, if you're going against a lot of CC, uh, Magi's is not a horrible choice. I'm going to go very aggressive right now. I'm 7-0. and zero. I'm quite big. Our team is winning. So I'm going to go into a Hydra. A Wheelix has a lot of Hydra's proccing opportunities. Um, you'll get it from your Cougar, your Feather Step, your Three. Uh, your ult. You'll get it from every ability. Uh, you will not get it just from hopping up and off of... Uh, actually, will you? I don't think you shouldn't. Okay. You do not get it from hopping up and, uh, on and off of your Cougar. That was another one of those. You shouldn't get this, but let's see if it's still working because we just had a patch the other day. Um, so you have to actually use the ability to get the Hydra's proc. But if you can jump in on somebody with cougar or even blink three auto two auto like your damage is just ridiculous so i'm not going to use my ultimate on that robin you can see that i knocked him up so i had the opportunity uh to use it right there but i uh i didn't want to because i wanted to keep it up and i knew that i would have the damage without it keep in mind that while you standardly while you standardly want to use um, your your feather step on a top of a target, you saw right there what I actually did was I had my my feather step ready to go on a minion that was by him. Let's go do fire die. We probably could have ended the game right here, but I just want to make sure I hit up all of the uh, all of the information that you guys need. Realistically, we should have just ran down the Titan right there, but let's get a little bit more gameplay in. Um, so what I did right there was the Thoth was slightly out of my reach, so I hit a minion twice in order to get the AoE circle, and then I used the AoE circle in order to put that Thoth in range of the ability uh, and make to make sure I could get the damage on him. As with all gods, uh, with if you ever buy Hydras, you're trying to weave in the auto attacks um, in between your abilities. A Wheelix is no different in order to maximize your damage. So I'm going to get the Mantle of Discord right here. Help keep me safe. So with a Wheelix, we'll go do a little fake combo um, over on a camp to show you guys what you're looking to do. 
do 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 you're looking to jump in okay you want to jump in bam auto attack then you're gonna either three or two depending uh, if you can get on their side, you go ahead and three, auto attack again for the Hydra's proc, feather step them, auto attack again for the Hydra's proc. Now that's how you want to do your combo, even when you don't um, have the Hydra's, to make sure you're weaving in auto attacks, okay? Don't just uh, three, oh, three feather step right off the bat, right? You want to try to weave in those autos uh, if you can. At any given time, you always want to weave in autos on any god that you're playing to maximize the amount of damage. So I'm going to feather step right over that Robins too. I cannot ulti him while he is in his ulti. So I'm not even going to try. And bada bing, bada boom, we're looking pretty good. Make sure that you use your Hydra's proc on, on towers. So I use my three right there just to get that bonus damage on the towers. Hydra's does proc on towers, phoenixes, objectives, anything in the game that you can smack. I'm going to look to get a blink knockup going. I'm going to try to bait that I'm going this way. I'm going to try to blink behind somebody if I can. Right there, blink right behind the Rama. He has his feather step up. Uh, excuse me, he has his uh, roll out at his beads, so I can't kill him or anything. I might die here. I'm going to try to jump out of that Zonkui combo. And just like that, 25 minutes, 9, 0, and 7. The mantle of Discord saves our life. Uh, and we show how to land those Awelix combos. You're trying to get behind or to the side of people so you can knock them up with your three. Make sure you're weaving in an auto in between your abilities. Um... That way you're maximizing your damage. Three, auto attack, ulti, auto attack, two, auto attack. Always be weaving in those auto attacks. Make sure you're building high, high power to utilize your passive. And of course, don't be afraid to use your ultimate to do things like burn down a fire giant or a phoenix, guys. And that is our Awelix guide.